So let's move on to the second chapter in the book, Receiving God's Guidance, which talks about David inquired of God. Who was King David? We all know who was King David was. King David son was dearly Jesse. loved son of Jesse. Okay. Anyone else? Second king of Israel, a man with the God's own heart. Praise God. Thank you. So David was dearly loved by God. What a testimony that David carried within himself. David was a man who loved the Lord deeply and sought to follow God throughout his life. And God even spoke to Samuel, Prophet Samuel, uh, saying that I have found David, the son of Jesse, a man after my own heart who will no, he, he clearly says that who will do all my will. And also in the book of Acts, chapter 13, verse 36, you know, Paul preaches about David saying that for David, after he had served his own generation by the will of God, fell asleep, was buried with his fathers and saw corruption. But what does Paul say? He says, served his own generation by the will of God. You see, so important to serve the Lord by the will of the Lord. We need to seek God's will. David seeked God in, in all situations. He seeked God's will. What an amazing testimony that David carries in his life where God would say, David, a man after my own heart. We see in uh, uh, many situations in David's life, his thought process was very different from any normal being. When Saul was chasing him when he was after his life and David had a lot of chances to kill him but he refused to uh, you know to uh, to uh, to do that he honored that he is a child of God and I have no rights to kill him the same thing happened with Absalom You see, the fear of the Lord, this man lived with the fear of the Lord. There were instances where David fell. But then, even then, we see the repentance of David. He seeked the Lord for forgiveness. He seeked the Lord to forgive and restore him with his Holy Spirit. He writes in the Psalms, he writes in one of the Psalms saying that, Create in me a clean heart and do not take away your Holy Spirit from me. It was in the Holy Spirit where it was in the Old Testament where the Holy Spirit used to visit the people. It didn't abide with them, but only in the New Testament, after the de after the death and resurrection of Jesus, where the Holy Spirit came upon each one of them on the day of Pentecost and abide abided with each of us forever. So we all have the Holy Spirit in us who leads us, who guides us. We heard of David's life. We see that David served by the will of God. He did God's will, followed God's purpose and fulfilled all the assignments for his life. One of the key secrets of David's life was that he was a man who inquired of the Lord for every decision making in his life. Can we be like that? As we journey in our life, can we inquire for every decision making to God? Can we have this deep relationship? It was more than that. It was an intimate relationship that David developed with God. How did this happen? Did it happen suddenly when uh, once he became a king? Or was that there from before?
David as a young uh you know uh, uh, david in his youth yes he was a shepherd boy but even during those days we see how skillful he was he was a skillful on the harp he was a mu musician he was courageous very bold he could fight back he'd save his lambs save his sheep from the lion and the bear the dangerous animals that try to attack he was prudent he was wise he was good looking and god was with him the scripture says that in 1 samuel chapter 16 and prophet samuel anointed him by the king i mean anointed him to be the next king after saul but but we need to see was uh, david been recognized by his own family that he was skillful enough when jesse we see uh, the scripture says that when jesse visit uh, sorry when samuel visited jesse's house to anoint one of his son to be the king jesse introduces all his sons they were mighty they were strong they were tall they were physically fit at each person when samuel went to the lord said this is not the person and samuel asked jesse are these the only son and jesse said there's one more little but he is in the field taking care of the sheep and samuel says take me to him and here the minute samuel met david the lord spoke to samuel saying he is the one anoint him clear clear message from god this is my son anoint him god delighted in david even when he was young david was fearless david was you know uh, he was very wise he was favored by god and with this knowing uh, that uh, david knew that god was with him after the anointing uh, when samuel anointed him as king he received the confirmation of god that he has been anointed with a special call and david started thinking and moving in that direction one day when he happened to meet uh, happened to take lunch for his brothers and he heard that uh, there uh, there was this a uh, big giant there though the whole israel was scared to face this giant david with his skill with his slingshot he killed goliath we all know the victory came from god so god backed david in all his ways david seeked god you david uh, david looked at the giant and said you come with um, uh, you come with weapon but i come with the name of the lord god of israel he always inquired god he partnered with god he moved in his presence david after after killing goliath we see david behaved wisely there was a change in his nature he behaved wisely he was highly favored because the divine favor was upon him and and people knew that the lord was with him and he was uh, he, uh, he was moving in his guidance the minute uh, minute people started praising uh, david and this moved king saul with jealousy and he tried to kill david and because of this david had to run from cave to cave to protect himself while david was on the run there was a group of about 400 people joined him 
and accepted him as a leader how did this 400 people join him he was led by the lord though he was running god's presence was with him god does great and mighty things david was in the process of learning how to be a king how to lead people god was teaching him to be a good king a mighty king a mighty warrior in these days so there was 400 men who joined david and then we have several records in the scripture how david inquired the lord to make every step every decision in his life and can we turn to first samuel chapter 23 verse 1 to 5 first samuel chapter 3 verse 3, 1 to verse 5 1 to 5 Can we read Can this? We read this. First Samuel chapter twenty-three, verse one to five. Then they told David, "Say, look, the Philistines are fighting against Gilead, and they are robbing the threshing floor. Therefore, David inquired of the Lord, Say, shall I go and attack this Philistine? And the Lord said to David, Go and attack the Philistine, and save." Gilead. But David's men said to him, Look, we are afraid here in Judah. How much more than if you go to Gilead against the armies of the Philistines? Then David inquired of the Lord once again, and the Lord answered him and said, Arise, go down to Gilead, for I will deliver the Philistines into your hand. And David and his men went to Gilead. Gilead and fought the Philistine, struck them with a mighty blow, and look, and took away their livestock. So David saved the inhabitants of Kilia. Thank you. Thank you. So we see David we inquired, see of, the inquired Lord. of the Lord. My voice is echoing. Is okay. 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 Can we mute Can our we mics, mute? please? Okay, thank you. So David inquired of the Lord whether he should engage the Philistines at Kyla, and the Lord told him to go ahead. We see that David uh, had this little band of 400 men, and when he said we can go against these Philistines who are mighty, who are bigger in size than them, the 400 men were fearful and they were hesitant. So David goes back. He does not force people. So he goes back to God and he inquires the Lord second time. And he wanted to be sure that it's a clear yes from God. When he goes for the second time, the Lord told David, go and assure the victory to him. And when David and his men fought this battle, they experienced God's victory. And this, you know, uh, this gave, a, 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 this boosted their confidence, not only to David, but also to David's men. They knew that David was hearing from God and he is leading them. And whenever David inquired with God, and when he listened and when he obeyed, they saw the victory. Just like David, even in our life, even in our daily life, it can be a decision making for our family, for our uh, a workplace, or at uh, ministry. It can be any area. When, uh, when we inquired of the Lord and uh, made a decision for, of which our family members or the co-team in our ministry or our, our, our colleagues at the office may not be comfortable. But then there's nothing wrong in we inquiring with the Lord again. 
and when we listen to the lord and by his guidance when you when we make this decision we can be assured for the things to be in our favor because we have inquired with the lord and we have obeyed his word even though it was difficult to be uh, even though it was not normal in the natural realm but then with god all things are possible when we hear his word when we take his guidance we'll see the hand of the lord in our life in our family in our workplace in our ministry so it is good to seek him and listen to god again and make sure that we are hearing from him and when we move forward with that decision we will see the success our family members our team our ministry will see the success and hand of the lord in that at times in our life we will face some severe setbacks just like david had faced can we turn to 1 samuel chapter 30 verse 1 to 8 can i request any one of us to please read this 1 Samuel chapter 30 verse 1 to 8 First Samuel chapter 30 was 1 to 8 Now it happened when David and his men came to Ziklag on the third day that the Amalekites had invaded the south and Ziklag attacked the attacked Ziklag and burned it with fire and had taken captives the women and those who were who were there from small to great they did not kill anyone but carried them away and went their way so david and his men came to the city and there it was burned with fire and their wives their sons their daughter had been taken captive then david and the people who were with them lifted their voices and wept until they had more power to weep and david's two wives amina the jezreelite and the gave and abigail the widow of nabal the carmelite had been taken captive now david was greatly distressed for the people spoke of stoning him because the soul of the people was grieved every man for his son and his daughter but david strengthened himself in the lord then david said to abithair the priest abimelech's son please bring the effort here to me and abithair brought the effort to david thank you So we see that uh, David's team grew from four hundred to six hundred. At this time, David faced a severe setback, where as they were busy and away, their enemy had attacked their camp and carried away their families as captive. It was a very miserable situation for David. He was. It was a heartbreaking situation for him. He wept and he mourned. And during this time, David's men were very angry with David. See, it's not easy to be a leader. It's not easy to be a leader. Something good happens. Yes, they all will plot for you. But then something like this. happens you know we have been blamed they'll hold in charge of you even though if you were not the reason for all this imagine david's plight here he's not only had to deal with his own personal grief and pain because even his family has been taken captive but also david was a man of understanding he will always be concerned not only about him but also about others so he is going through this grief and pain for his people not only for his family but for his people the 400 men's family who believed him and they have joined his band but in midst of all this that he had to face the teams wrath and their reaction but in this season see what david does david was courage david uh, he was courageous and he was strengthened he received strength from god he inquired with god he cried out to god he prayed he sang with tears he loved god more than anything see the same thing yesterday we studied uh, i mean not yesterday the last week when we studied about 
no yesterday we studied in our old testament survey class about moses when moses faced the red sea what he did when people were angry they murmured against moses because he was the leader he looked up to god same way david looks up to god we as a children of god when we face some setbacks or difficult situation or miserable situation in our life we need to look up to god because our god is a god who makes way where there's no way he has solution for every setback david inquired with god david cried out to god David's men were about to stone him but when David cried out to God God gave him a solution God guided him in this situation David went through the uh, he, he listened he inquired with God and when God said go I'll give you the victory go and face these people and he went with his team and the, not everyone agreed with david they though they were 400 200 people refused to go along with david so only the 200 people went to attack the other people when they went to attack the amalekites amalekites god gave david the victory He, he brought his family his children along with the spoil and now david said we should share this with everyone equally with all 400 equally and the 200 men who went along with david they were upset saying that only we came with you not the other two but then david honored all 400 he honored the decisions why they could not join him in this battle but then he gave everyone equally this is the heart that he carried that's why god called david as a man after my own heart there was no partiality with david there was no partiality we need to have this kind of heart even in us as we study the scripture word by word chapter by chapter book by book we see how god renews our mind our thoughts to be more aligned with him we may think oh god only called david as a man after my own heart how about us today god is saying that you are my daughter you are much precious than anyone else each of us in this class god is looking at us and saying you are a man a woman after my own heart for a powerful lesson that we learn from david's life that no matter what happens in his life that he inquires god and when he obeys god gives him victory we must strengthen ourselves in god that we receive god's guidance his direction to handle every situation in our life let's turn to second samuel chapter 2 verse 1 to 4 when we are trans transitioning in our life can one of us please read second samuel chapter 2 verse 1 to 4 4 Second, second Samuel, Samuel. Second Samuel 2, 2. Okay, Second Samuel Samuel chapter 2 verse 1 to 4 It happened after this that David inquired of the Lord saying shall I go up to any of the city of Judah and the Lord said to him go up David said where shall I go up and he said to Hebron So David went up there and his two wives also I know am the Jezreel lights and Abigail the widow of Naba the Carmelite and David brought up the men who were with him 
every man with his household. So they dwelt in the cities of Hebron. Then the men of Judah came, and they, and they anointed David king over the house of Judah. And they told David, saying, The men of Jabesh Gilead were the one who buried Saul. Thank you. Thank you. So we see David. We see David. Yeah, brother, can you please brother, can mute, you your please mic? mute your mic? Thank you, because it echoes when I speak. So David has been running for his life from place to place to stay away from King Saul, who had been hunting to kill him. Suddenly, things changed in David. David received news that Saul had died. The man who was after David's life was no more. And this was a transition point in David's life. David had no longer had to keep running with his family from you know cave to cave or place to place. You don't have to hide anymore from King Saul and his men. So he could move into a place of stability. And again, the first thing David did was he inquired of the Lord, asking God, God, should I relocate to any of the cities? And the Lord asked him to relocate to the city of Judah. When the Lord gave an affirmation, With David asked the Lord, which area I should go? And God directed him, even in Judah, go to Hebron and stay there. And David obeyed God. David relocated to Hebron and he stayed there. And then what happens? Whenever we inquire of the Lord and in obedience comes reward, in obedience we receive our blessing. When David obeyed God and he relocated to Hebron in Judah, the people of Judah came to David and they anointed David as their king. Isn't it amazing? We see God's call has been fulfilled. It's not completely done, but it's in the process. Because God anointed David at a very young age to be the king of Israel. And we see the process. That means he is in line to God's will. When you and I listen and obey to God, we are on the path of fulfilling his call, his purpose in our life. And we see, uh, we see uh, the people of Judah anoint David as their king, and then he moves on fulfilling God's purpose. Then one step forward, we see that uh, you know uh, the he, he becomes the king of Israel. He moves from that place to the other. Later part, we see that how God, uh, after several years, maybe after seven and a half years. Uh, after seven and a half years, that he becomes the king of Israel. The leaders of the entire nation of Israel, they come and they tell David, and they invite him to be the king of Israel. And here God's plan was fulfilled completely in his life. What an important lesson that we need to learn from David's life is that we need to seek God. We need to inquire God. Let it be small or, or big decisions. When we seek God, when we ask God, God reveals his decision. God leads us because he desires to lead us. He knows his sheep. Journeying through life, uh, you know, uh, journeying through our life, when we uh, inquire uh, God and when we uh, lead our life with God's decision, we see we can experience God's blessing, and uh, with this we can be fruitful in all the area of our life, because we have invited God into our life.
when things are going wrong for no apparent reason can one of us please turn to second samuel chapter 21 verse 1 second samuel verse 21 1 now there was a farm famine in the days of david for three years year after year and david inquired to the lord and the lord answered it is because the saul and his breast bloodthirsty house because he killed the Gibbonites. So when David inquired with the Lord for the challenges that he faced in his kingship, the, because there was a famine for about three continuous years. So when David inquired, God revealed the root cause of the problem. So just like, and when he revealed the root cause of the problem, David took step, step to solve that. He repented and he restored the things with the Gibbonites and the famine came to a stop. So from this we learn it is how important it is for us to hear God and receive his guidance in some kind of difficult situation or challenges when we face in our life. When things may not go well with us or may, uh, you know, in some wrong situation, we need to ask God and seek his guidance. And when we listen to him, God will speak to us with his counsel, with his guidance. And when we put that into action, we see the change. We see the hand of the Lord turning a situation into our favor. There are different ways of inquiring of Lord. We, we may consider very few instances been recorded in the scripture about David inquiring the Lord. But how did this nature come into David of him inquiring with the Lord for every situation in his life? Did it happen only after he been anointed as a king or was it there even before? Though the Bible does not record of his early days, but we believe that something that was there within him, something that he had developed from his very young age, his dependence on God was something that made him to follow even when he had to make the major decisions. Today, as we journey with the Lord, when we develop, it's never too late to develop this relationship with God for seeking God's guidance, seeking God's will, inquiring with the Lord for every decision in our life. And God desires that relationship, that intimate relationship with us. He wants to give, uh, He wants us to give that place to him and not to any man. So our objective in this chapter is to discover how we can build this relationship with God, just like how David built. God desires to have this relationship with each one of us. Can we today decide that God, I want to have this relationship with you. I want to develop this intimate relationship with you where I could hear your voice, where I could seek you every day in my life and I need you. Without you, I cannot move. I cannot step ahead. I cannot move further. I need you. I want you to hold my hand and lead me. I want to hear that inner inner voice. I want to hear your voice I, in my inner sense that I want to hear your voice so that I can be clear in making decisions in my life. As we journey together, can we, can we uh, say a word of prayer? Asking God, seeking him to develop this intimate relationship with him so that we can hear his word, hear his voice clearly to make every decision in our life.
I want to hear your voice, Lord. I want to hear your voice, Lord. In the name of Jesus Christ. I want to hear your voice. 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 As we pray, we can unmute and pray in tongues. Those who are comfortable in praying in tongues can unmute and pray in tongues. Hallelujah, hallelujah, praise the Lord, hallelujah. Oriya la variyan thariya la bala shandara variya la bakura la bashikandariya la bashanda hikara la bashabara bala bala. Raba shabara bala bariya la variyan thariya la bala kura la bashikandariya la variyan thariya la bala shabara bala ba. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Dear God, as each of us come into your presence, we pray that, Lord, you will prepare a heart, mind, and soul to seek you in every day of our life, to develop this intimate relationship with you, just like how David did. Lord, we thank you that you have called us, you have chosen us. Thank you, Father, for your hand upon each of us. Thank you for your leading. Thank you for your guidance, O oh Father. Thank you, Lord, that you may open our eyes, that we may see you, open up our ears, that we may hear you. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Lord, we seek you with all our heart, with all our mind, and with all our soul, O oh Father. Thank you that you establish your... Thank you that you establish a relationship with you, O oh Father. Thank amen, you, amen, Lord. Amen. As each of us desire, Lord, I pray that, Lord, you will hear to each one of our requests, each one of amen, our desires, amen, 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 and you will hold our right hand and you will lead us, Lord. Thank you, Father. Amen, 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 amen. Jesus Lord. Thank name you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Amen. 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 Thank you so much. And yes, we have some time now. Let's move into the time of testimony. Who would like to go first to share your testimony? Should I call or you will come forward? Praise the Lord. Yes, please. Oh, my name is Enoch. Just Success. 10 minutes. Each of us have 10 minutes time to share the testimony. Oh. So I request you to share your testimony uh, of how uh, you uh, how how you got into the Lord, your journey, and you know what made you to join Bible College in 10 minutes. Oh, so that I we give to, chance I, for everyone. I want, All right. I want to thank God now for what God is doing in my life. When I Actually, I had my BA in religious studies, but I wasn't satisfied more because I need more of God's word to journey in my ministry. So I was doing a research on every Bible in any Bible school, any theologic school, all over the world on the site. So when I came across the APC, I checked their website, checked their criteria, listened to the previous testimony. I say, wow, this is where I'll be looking for. This is what I'll be looking for. So when I saw the, when I registered, I wasn't having enough money. So I was like, can I be able to make it? But when I registered, I received a message. I was like, God, indeed, your hand is here. But what I triggered me is all the, the course outlines. A genuine born again, once you see some course outline, you should be able to know that this is really pure work of God, word of God. So the first uh, outline that I received, I read it from beginning 
to the end. My mind was, I was like, God, thank you. And secondly, financially, I'll be done. I'll be praying. But since the week I started, God had begun to show up financially in my life. I'm so I, I'm so blessed now that I can give out. Before I couldn't give out, even being a pastor, I pray, pray, pray. But I believe there is something that will trigger something. So I'm glorified the name of God for this course. I'm going through them. Um, in fact, when I registered for e-learning, I was receiving a lot of courses, outlines. I want to say thank you because you have transformed my life and this will remain. And I'm going to bring more people also by the special grace of God. All my friends will join by the special grace of God. Praise God. Praise God. Thank you so much, Enoch. Is there anyone else who would like to go next? That's wonderful to hear your testimony. Yeah, can I come in? Yes, please, Isaac. Yeah, thank God um, for his leadership. And like you are saying, we ask God to lead us in everything that we do. Yeah, I'm a retired airport worker, but uh, my wife has a ministry. I have a little bit of Bible background. So I was always hoping that I have an opportunity to increase my knowledge. I did the foundation course, certificate course with ABC. And then later on, I saw uh, in the Facebook for this degree program. And then like my colleague was saying, the outline, the course set up, I do like it. So I decided to follow. I listened, I decided to follow because I needed to increase my knowledge. And the greatest gift was like, when I entered for the course that evening, later on, I had the opportunity to, to get an option for tuition weaver. Because it could not have been easy for me just to, I mean, uh, uh, pay up for the course. So that was also a blessing. I think uh, God led me properly to the right side. And I will be happy to continue with this course so that I will increase my level. And I want to bless God for all of you who are our lecturers, who are actually delivering. We pray that God continues for you to deliver and they will listen properly to you and then to God so that we will continue and fulfill our mission. Thank God for everybody. That's a wonderful testimony. Thank you so much for sharing. Next. Yeah. Can I, can I come in? Yes, please. Yeah, good day, everyone. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, anywhere we find yourself in the whole world, the Lord will continue to bless us in Jesus' name. Uh, Pastor, thank you very much. I, re I really appreciate you. Uh, this is my brief testimony. I'm a presiding pastor in my church, but uh, I've always been looking to, to learn outside the shore of my comfort zone. I always want to learn outside the shore of my comfort zone. So when I was searching online, when I saw APC Bible College, I said, okay, let me give it a try. So first and foremost, what attracted me was uh, the waiver. When I saw the waiver, I said, okay, good. Let me give it a try. So when I registered, when I saw the Hello, can you hear me? Hello, can you hear me now? Yes, yes, yes we can hear you now. Oh, okay. Yes, we can okay. Hear you now. We can hear you. Oh, okay. Glory be to God. So when I saw the when I saw the course outline, when I saw everything, so details, so complex, so comprehensive, very easy to understand. It was very very marvelous. So when I joined, I've been going through it. So though sometimes. Uh, the time, the time zone is a bit constrained, but I also register for e learning so that I can at least, if I'm not here, I will be in the e learning to just manage everything I really want to learn. And I want to say to the management, God will continue to strengthen you for this opportunity given to people even outside the shore of India. God will continue to bless you in the name of Jesus. And uh, let me say this lastly before I hang up. Uh, I really want to work with the management to bring this. APC Bible College to my country and to my jurisdiction by the special grace of God. Thank you very much. Pastor Enoch, please, you can check me and DM me 
so that we can we can work things together. Uh, Pastor Abuba Kritu Biloba, you can be a me too, so that, uh, so that we can we can do something together and bring this Bible college down to Nigeria by the special grace of God. I've, I've been looking for this opportunity. I will email you. Okay, okay. 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 okay, okay. So, Abuba Kritu Biloba, success in us. Let us, let us, we, we the Nigerian okay. students here, let us work together and see what we can no do. No problem. No problem. All right. We'll Thank you very much and God bless you all. Bravo. I'm in Abuba. I will email you. I'm in, I'm in Osun State. Okay, I'm in Lagos State. Okay. Okay. I'm in Abuja, no problem, sir. I'm okay. Okay. All right, God bless us in Jesus' name. Pastor, thank you very much for this wonderful opportunity. We bless God. I will stay in. Hello? Hello? Pastor, you're on mute. Okay, thank you so much for sharing your experience and and your desire uh, about uh, taking the word and reaching it out to the world. Yes, it is one of our mission at APC is to be the salt and light to the city where we live in and to the nation and to the nation. So that's amazing to know that you desire to, to be part of APC and to carry this word, this teaching, and to teach everyone around you. That's amazing. And I think that should be in us to be the salt and light. It's not the vision. It's not only the vision of APC, but that's what has been expected from each of us. God expects this from each of us, that we permeate, we be the light, we be the salt, and we be the voice to the nation and to the nations. So with this, we will end this class. See you all next week. Thank you so much. God bless you all. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. God bless.